Okay, I'm going to walk through the building of a basic database application that uses web forms and .NET uh, grid view and uses a separate web form for updates and inserts. This will show you how some of the pieces of SQL that we've been talking about will come together in a complete application. I'm going to use the sample d database that I just created for users and groups um, in order to show how this uh, editing might work. So. Here I have a uh, basic empty web form application created. So first thing we're going to need is to establish a database connection on my page so that I can load some data in. So I'm going to put in a SQL uh, data source and I'm going to configure that data source using the connection to my sample database. And uh, we will, uh, let's edit the uh, users table here. So I'm going to pick this and we're going to be working with the users table and I'm going to go ahead and select all of those rows so that's fine and I want to um, be able to do, um, uh, pick editing and selecting and things like that so I'm going to need to go to the advanced table and generate the insert update and delete statements now I'm not going to actually allow my grid to do the editing and inserting for me I'm going to do that on a separate page but in order to have that option in my table, uh, I am going to um, turn those on. I could do this a different way by putting a button in my table, but this way is just as easy. So, uh, test the query. I don't have anything in my table, so I am finished. So, uh, I should probably put a couple of sample data items in my table so that it, uh, I can actually have a couple items the first time I run the program. So, I'm going to pause and do that. Okay, my day, the table has some stuff in it now, so uh, I can test this data source just real quick. Back again, configuring my data source. If I go through here to finish, I can hit test, and I can see that I have a couple of uh, pieces of data in here now. So I can finish that. So I want to visually represent this data, so I am going to use a grid view. I'm going to drag that out here onto my table, and I'm going to associate that grid view with um, the data source that I just uh, created SQL data source one. Uh, I want to be able to allow editing. So uh, I want to be able to click somebody to be able to click edit and to, I'm going to take them to another page. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, enable editing. And um, I could do the same thing with enabling deleting, but we'll we'll talk about that in a future time. So here I have, uh, I don't really like the way this table looks, so I'm going to edit the columns. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this user ID table, which is my unique identifier for each user. Uh, I don't want people to see that, so I'm just going to set that to be invisible. So visibility will equal false. I still want it in my table because that's the unique identifier and it's easier for me to grab and, uh, and send it over if I already have it. Uh, I also need to then um, uh, come to my grid view and tell the grid view which is my uh, data key. Uh, and here you see the data key name is user ID. So it has correctly identified the primary key as my data key name. That's important because when I do things like edit, uh, I can then in the code that intercepts the edit click, I can identify and grab the um, the primary key to send to another page. Uh, here I also think that this table is kind of ugly so I'm going to go ahead and use one of the pre-existing formats uh, something like uh, that one's fine. Makes the table look a little bit nicer. And again these uh, table headings you can see uh, the word last name is smashed together and looks kind of a little funny so if I edit the columns I can go in here to first name and I can do something like put a space in there to make it look a little bit more readable. Same way with last name, I can make that look a little bit more readable. And there's my table. So if I run this uh, code, I should theoretically get a simple little table with a, the two entries from my, um, from my database. And you'll notice I have John Doe and John Kennedy and Jack Kennedy and uh, if I click edit, it actually goes into edit mode and it would allow me to edit information and update it in place. This is the neat thing about Visual Studio is a lot of the things it automatically does for you. Now, 
what we want to do in this particular case is when I click edit, I want to take this information and I want to send the user to a update user content page. So I want to grab this, this event and I want to intercept it so that it doesn't throw it into that particular editing uh, block. So uh, if I click this, it's going to give me the event selected index changed. That's not the one I want. I want the edit indexed changed um, in the, the in the event. So I'll go ahead and create a new event here, protected void. Uh. Okay, so we need to add that event handler. So here I created one and you'll notice I modified it a little bit from what I just had a second ago. I am creating the event handler called row editing. Only reason I renamed it is because that's the name of the event. So this keeps my code a little bit cleaner. And then you'll notice that this is expecting a grid view edit events arg um, instead of just an events arg. So that's my type uh, for type E. So now I actually need to attach that to the event. So if I go back to my grid view, uh, I can hit the little lightning bolt events here. So, so normally it would be under properties um, over here. It would look like this. So you click the lightning bolt. That will give me the access to the events that are associated with the grid view. And here under row editing, if I pull down the little pull down, my event that I just created, grid view one underscore row editing, will appear. And so that attaches this particular event handler to the event row editing. So what is row editing? Row editing is the event that is fired as soon as you click the edit button. This is before it switches the grid into edit and view mode. So if we intercept that event at that point, we can redirect to another page for our editing and the grid will never actually go into that edit update mode. So here uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to my um, my project and I'm going to add another page here. Um, so I'm going to add a new web form and we'll call this the update form or the update page. So I'll just name that update. Uh, so I now have this new page called update and it's currently blank. So I'll just say this is the update page just to give us something to look at. So back in our main code, Inside of grid view, I'm going to do some stuff, uh, do stuff to get the primary key. Uh, I'm going to save the primary key in a session variable so that I can send it to the other page. And then I am going to uh, redirect to the update page. Well, I know how to do that, so I'm going to do response dot redirect, and it's going to go to update dot aspx. So we should be able to test that out now and see if it updates to our other page. So let's go ahead and give it a whirl, and uh, our page loads. And if I click edit, it now comes to the this is the update page. You'll remember that previously when I clicked edit it put the table into edit mode and I was ready to go. So uh, that part of our task is accomplished. Now I need to get the primary key. So uh, I'm going to create a little temporary variable here int uh, primary key uh, equals and uh, I'm going to set this equal to the uh, selected value from the grid view. So uh, I'm going to pause for a second, get my thoughts together, and I'll be back to you in a second. Okay, here we see that to get the primary key from the table, I need to go into the uh, grid view, uh, selecting the uh, data keys field. The data keys is a, uh, think of it as an array or a collection 
of all of the associated primary keys with a particular row of data. So when I click on the edit button here, when I click on edit, uh, the grid view knows what row I just collected. And that, uh, that, that row is passed, the index of that row is passed in this event E. So e.newEditIndex is the index number of the row I clicked on. Now, that means if I click on the 15th row, I've clicked on I, e, e dot new in, edit index is the value 15. That is not necessarily the uh, primary key of the item that's in row 15. So I am looking up the primary key of the data in the table based on which row number was clicked on. And so that's what this thing does. And it needs to be an integer because that's what I want to send because that's what I stored in my database as the type for uh, for this user ID number. So this line gets the user ID from the grid. This creates a session variable called user ID that I can read on my second page. And it sets the value of that user ID equal to this primary key. And then I jump over to the update page. So if I come over here to the update page, uh, I've added a little bit of text here called key, and I added a label, and I called that label LB user ID, so I can remember what it's going to represent. So in code, on the uh, page load, when the page first loads, I'm going to grab the session uh, variable user ID, and I'm going to display it in that text box just to see if we have it. If we have it, once we have it correctly on this page, we can then use it to do other things like retrieve information. So uh, let's see if that works. So I need to go back to my default. I'm just going to go ahead and tell it that this is my start page, so I don't care which um, where I am in the editing. So it'll always load default first. So here's my thing. So if, uh, if I click on Edit John Doe, I redirect and it says that the user ID for John Doe is one. If I go back to this page and I click Jack Kennedy, look, user key is two. Those are the correct user IDs. They happen to agree with the row number as well, but um, that's just coincidence in this particular case. So we have a functional uh, redirection taking our grid view um, data key and sending it to page two. So now let's go ahead and build out page two with some code to um, uh, to update our text boxes and uh, load in some information. So first off, let's design this page a little bit. And um, I'm going to throw in here uh, first name and uh, last name and alias and email. Those were the fields that are going to be stored and then I'm going to have an update button. So I need a toolbox. Um, I need a text box. And so I'm going to drag that out here and drop it somewhere. This particular spot is not right. So first name, I'll copy that and I'll paste it here and I'll paste it here and I'll paste it here. So there are my text boxes. I like to make my text box um, name meaningful. So instead of calling it text box two, I'm going to call it TB to remind myself it's a text box and then first name. And I'll do the same thing with this one. TB last name. TB alias and TB email. Uh, now I need an update button that's going to save this stuff back to the database. So let's see here, button. And let's change the name on that button to update or save. Uh, we should also give the person a chance to cancel. So I'm going to put another button on here and put a little bit of space between them. And we'll call this one cancel. 
So cancel simple. We can write the code for that super easy. Uh, response dot redirect to default. We won't do anything. We just send it back to the original page and we're done. Any changes that the person will have edited are gone. Let's do the same thing for the save command. And we actually, the last thing we want to do on the save command is the exact same thing that we did there. But we need to save the changes to the database before we do that. So uh, there are ways to have um, use.NET to do a lot of these updates for us, but we're going to um, do this with uh, the, the direct SQL statements that we've been working with. So I am going to need a SQL connection and a SQL command uh, and build the update query. So I'm going to do some of that offline and review it in a minute. Okay, here we have, I've created my using statement so that I can directly access SQL client uh, statements. I've created a SQL connection to the data source that we're interested in. And I've created a SQL command that has the update uh, SQL statement so that um, I'm going to update the users table and I'm going to set the first name, last name, alias, and then where the user ID is equal to at you, uh, user ID. You'll notice that this part right here is a field name in SQL. So you got to make sure those match your field names in your SQL table. And then here, the at is a SQL command parameter, which I will use to send information into my SQL string. Um, so the way I do that is I will do a um, cmd dot add or sorry parameters this, this is actually accessing the parameters collection that's inside the command op, uh, SQL command uh, so then I can do add with value and now it's expecting the name of the parameter so I want to say at first name and now it's going to ask me where do I want to get that value from and that's going to be TB first name dot text. So what that is doing, that line of code, is taking the value that's currently in the text box and it's going to put it in the, the parameter to send to the update command. So I can do the same thing with each of my uh, parameters. So I have all four of my parameters set, uh, but I forgot to set my user ID parameter, so I better add that one in here. This one comes from a different source, though. This is not from a text box. This is from that session variable that we sent to uh, this page. So this is going to be session um, user ID. OK, so I've got all my parameters set. So now I need to open my connection. Uh, that will access my database, uh, command.execute non-query. That will send my update query information to the database, and then I will close my collection. Now, all of this stuff could very well generate an error, so you should actually do some things like a try statement and catch all of your exceptions. In our particular case, since this is just an example, we're going to let the errors come through to us and, um, and help, hopefully we won't have any. Okay, so we have our update working, but we haven't filled in our form yet with any data from the original page. So uh, here we, in page load, we have to preload the information. Now, here's where a trick comes in with web programming. We have to load the page only when we come directly to this page, not when somebody clicks on a button on this page or some other thing that causes the page to do what is called a postback. A postback is a request back to the server to run some code and then re-display the same page over again. 
if we were to preload our data, when anybody changes a field or any sort of update happens, it might reload the data over top of the changes they've made. So we want to say if page dot is post back if not page dot is post back I guess that's a property now this code would run on the initial load of the page so this is what we would do to uh, create our query and uh, open up uh, our uh, our database and do some stuff so I'm going to borrow this uh, code and um, and we're going to build our code around it so first off this is wrong we don't want to update here. We want to um, select. So we're going to select everything from users, where the user ID is equal to that. We now only have one parameter, so we can trash this. So here we are ready to execute a query to read in some information. but. This is not a non-query. This is something that's supposed to run, send us back some information. So I need a new thing that's going to read it. So I'm going to use a SQL reader, a SQL data reader. I'm going to call it reader. And I'm going to set this equal to command.execute reader. That tells it to execute this SQL statement uh, all of the results will come back in the form of a data reader. Uh, data readers are really useful because they can uh, absorb um, multiple rows worth of data. In our particular case, our select is only going to return one row because we have a specific user um, aware condition. Uh, so in this particular case, a good format that I like to use is an if statement. So if uh, reader dot read. Uh, so what that does is reader dot read goes and asks for the first row of the data source, and uh, since there's only going to be one, uh, I want to do this stuff. Uh, I want to run this code when the, the reader succeeds in reading a line. Uh, if you're going to read multiple rows, I would do this in a while statement. I would do while reader.read. And so each time through the while statement, it'll read a new row. And finally, when the, there's no more rows for it to read, reader.read will return a value of false because it didn't read anything, and your while loop would end. So I now have this reader sitting here ready to give us information. So the way I extract information from it is I would do something like tb, uh, say, first name dot text is equal to uh, reader. And now the reader has a value, um, like an index. So I can do something like first name. Uh, whoops. Square brackets. So you can think of reader sort of a little bit like your um, uh, like your session variable that we talked about. This is a uh, uh, this this acts as an index into the fields that were returned by reader. Uh, dot let's see to string here. Let's make that happen. Okay, so that would take whatever value comes back from the reader, and it'll put it in first uh, tb first name. And so I'll do the same thing for the rest of these.
Okay, so here we have each of the fields being filled in by the value from the reader. Uh, hopefully this should work. Let's give it a shot and see what we see. Okay, here I'm going to edit the John Doe record. So if I click edit, I come to the page. I'm on the update page. John Doe, JD2, there's my stuff. So I can go ahead and change his update. And if I click save, it should save it back. And you'll notice that his alias has now been updated to J Doe. So if I come in here, Jack Kennedy, I can come in, I could change his name to John and say hit save. And there it is. Uh, coming back to Jack, I can make it go back to Jack. And I should test to see that cancel does in fact ignore my change. So I come back, there's John, edit again, Jack, save, and there it is. So I've now shown you the cycle that we can use to use a data grid, intercept the update event so that instead of going into update mode where you might have a table that's really wide and it'll be awkward, you intercept that event, you redirect to an edit page. On that edit page, you can load some data from the database, uh, allow the person to edit the fields, and then save the data back to the database. Uh, that completes this particular tutorial on how to create a simple data-driven application in a web form.